Good morning, Bimblers. And you join me on top of Forest Way Bridge, where we left off in the last episode. That's right, we're Trans Pennine Bimbling today. National Cycle Route 62, Episode 7. We're getting through them, slowly but surely. We're right by where Charles Taylor built that big iron ship, Warrington's Titanic. I mentioned that in a previous bimble. In fact, I'm going to be mentioning a lot of previous bimbles today because this is my stomping ground, Warrington. I'm a Warrington lad born and bred. So you'll have to forgive me if I waffle on about something I've already waffled on about. But I can't deprive the new viewers of the rich Warrington history. So let's stop messing about and let's bimble. National Cycle Route 62 passes under two railway viaducts around here by something called Morley Common. We visited the smaller of the viaducts previously in a video I entitled Warrington What Where Who. I'm sure there'll be links to that down in the description. It's possibly Warrington's oldest railway viaduct and it was probably designed by either George Stevenson, Joseph Locke or Robert Stevenson. That's George Stevenson's son. It was opened in 1837 for the Grand Junction Railway. That's a railway that went all the way from Birmingham to Dallamere in Warrington, where it would have met with the Liverpool to Manchester line, the world's first intercity steam-powered railway, as designed by George Stevenson and Joseph Locke. Same fellas. And they're the same fellas that must have designed this railway viaduct. An interesting comparison is between this little viaduct and the big one behind it. This little one only had to accommodate Mersey Flats, the barges that used to go up and down the River Mersey, and down the Sankey Canal, and down the Weaver Navigation, whereas the big viaduct had to get the railway line up to the level of the next viaduct, which goes over the Manchester Ship Canal. Big ocean-going vessels going down that, much bigger. It doesn't quite have the history of the little viaduct though, possibly Warrington's oldest railway viaduct, which must have been designed by either Joseph Locke, George Stevenson, or his son Robert Stevenson. And nobody talks about it. There's no Wikipedia page or blurb about it on the internet, apart from me talking about it. But the dates can't lie. Let's bimble. Those railway viaducts didn't just pass over the River Mersey, they passed over this, the Runcorn Latchford Canal, aka the Old Key Canal, aka the Black Bear Canal, aka the Irwell Navigation, aka the artist formerly known as Canal. Most of the Runcorn Latchford Canal is now gone, but there's still a section here by Morley Common that has some water in it. In fact, in episode 5.5 of our Trans Pennine Bimbles, there's a section at Wig Island that also still has some water in it. It was opened in July of 1804 to bypass all the twisty bits of the River Mersey and to bypass Francis Egerton's Bridgewater Canal, which we also visited in that episode. It was superseded by the railways and the railways were superseded by the Manchester Ship Canal and the Manchester Ship Canal was superseded by the East Lanks Road, which was designed with a cycleway to the side of it. The East Lanks Road was superseded by the M62 motorway 
and the motorways are basically the canals of the 20th century, aren't they? Although you can't ride your bike down the motorway. We'll no doubt be riding under some motorways and over the top of some motorways. Let's bimble. All of that fascinating history lies to the side of this, Morley Common. I've mentioned it a few times now, haven't I? Morley is Old English for meadow, and common means common ground or common land. It's where you could do a bit of farming without paying a rich lad some rent. It's actually where we get the term commoner from, meaning someone that uses common land. I need to say a big thank you to a John Williams from the Warrington Local History Group. He posted some pages from his book all about the local history around Morley Common and Walton and Stockton Heath and places like that. Without him, I wouldn't know about Morley Common. Thanks very much, John. Prior to the building of the Manchester Ship Canal, this would have been part of the district of Runcorn. Does that mean that Warrington's oldest railway viaduct should be Runcorn's oldest railway viaduct? I hope not. I bet John knows. Morley Common would have been much larger than it is today but they built a factory, a hydrogen peroxide factory and the effluent outflow flows into just where we were doing a piece to camera about the Runcorn Latchford Canal and it flows into what would have been the River Mersey that's right, they shifted it that's Bimble Last time I came filming here, Bimblers, this fence wasn't here. It's a new addition to stop you getting into the old locks. Rightly so. The building of the giant Manchester Ship Canal meant they had to reroute the River Mersey several times. Lest we forget, the River Mersey and the Manchester Ship Canal are one and the same, at least between Warburton and Rixton. Here near the centre of Warrington, they cut a large loop out of the river and they made that into Causeway Park. That's where my niece Phoebe's favourite playground is. Hi Phoebes, you okay? I ride my bike that way to work every morning, down a road called River Road. Well, that's not why I ride my bike down there, because it used to be the River Mersey. I ride my bike down there to get off the main roads, because I don't want to get run over by a BMW. Part of the original course of the River Mersey was used as a wharf off the Manchester Ship Canal, and that wharf was used by Greenall's Brewery to shift hops about and export out Vladivar vodka. It's made in Warrington. Well, it's made in Scotland now. In the 1990s, they filled in some more of that wharf and made another park. It's all very nice around here. But the locks to get you from the Manchester Ship Canal back into the River Mersey are still here. Only there's no water in it these days. Just a load of mud. Probably right they've put these fences up. Best along the way, but it's 
those arms that told me I don't care if it's yours or mine Without you it's just a waste of time You showed me from the start Well, Bimblers, we've reached a fork in the road. If we go that way, we could go down the original stretch of the Runcorn Latchford Canal, aka the Old Key Canal, aka the Black Bear Canal. We could go all the way down there, through Wolston, over Wolston Eyes, back onto the Manchester Ship Canal, and end up back on National Cycle Route 62. Maybe on a different day. If we go that way, back where we've came, we could go in Morrison's for an ultimate all day breakfast, but we don't have time. So I think we have to go that way because we're trans Pennine bimbling, aren't we? Let's bimble. Hard to hold you down. No some get lost along the way. As sure as night designed the day. As long as I'm allowed to say. It's my heart that told me I don't care, you just disagree Without you it wasn't meant to be You showed me from the start You may have seen in the news a few years back the uproar that was caused by Peel Holdings when they proposed to increase the toll over Warburton Bridge from 12p to £1. It would have been the first toll increase since 1894. If we adjust for inflation, it would have been two and a half shillings to cross back in 1894. And if we put that in new money, it should be about 13 quid to cross over the Warburton Bridge. I'm not in favour of increasing the toll though. It doesn't make a difference to me. It's free if you're on your bike. But Peel Holdings have had enough, haven't they? We've given the Manchester Ship Canal. We've given Salford Keys. We've just given them Fiddler's Ferry Power Station. And now they want extra money to do up a bridge that they should have been doing up anyway. This bridge in Warrington is the twin sister of the Warburton Bridge. Exactly the same design by exactly the same designer, Edward Leader Williams, the chief engineer of the Manchester Ship Canal Company. Only this bridge in Warrington is run by Warrington Borough Council and they keep it a lot nicer, freshly painted. And what do we call this bridge in Warrington? Do we call it Warrington Bridge, Latchford Bridge, Stockton Heath Bridge? No, we call it Cantilever Bridge because that's the style of bridge call a spade a spade Maybe it didn't work at the time Maybe it never did A mistake that made the distance Trying way to live Maybe it's the time that you grabbed at my arms And electricity flowed from my shoulders to palms In a white hot glow Leaving white cold scars Left fair and on show Just to prove they were ours Maybe it worked Maybe it never did I've climbed up a disused railway embankment, Bimblers, so you don't have to. It's not part of National Cycle Route 62, but I am an experienced Warrington Sherpa. I've been coming up here since I was about nine years old. And we've come up here 
to see Latchford Viaduct. It's been a very bridge heavy episode, hasn't it? But I do like bridges. They're in my top five. Bridges, churches, big boats, canals and post boxes. Latchford Viaduct used to carry the Altrincham and Warrington Junction Railway. That was up until 1853, before it even opened, when it became the Warrington and Stockport Railway. A large stretch of National Cycle Route 62, which we'll be tackling in the next episode, is that very railway line. Passenger services ceased on Monday the 10th of September 1962. That's all thanks to Mr Beechin. He's a fellow that wrote a government report saying that they should close all the railways because it would be cheaper. I call him the patron saint of cycle paths because all those railways that he closed become cycleways for me to bimble down. All hail Mr Beechin. The line officially closed in July 1985. I would have been about six months old when that happened. But the railway viaduct looms large in my memory. I got grounded for coming up here. Me and my mates went and got a load of boxes from Quicksave. And we were sliding down it on our bums. And my sister told on me. What my mum didn't know at the time is we'd been coming up here quite a lot. In fact, we found an old mailbag by what used to be Latchford Station. But we couldn't take it home because our mums had known we'd been up the railway embankment. To all the other YouTubers that have been up here, nobody in the houses either side of the railway embankment care that you're up here. Kids come up here and smoke and do graffiti. My dad used to walk the dog up here. Anyway, I've got to get back down now. I don't think I'll slide down on my bum on a cardboard box though. Quite like how it is Maybe it didn't work at the time Maybe it never did A novelty improvement Left lonely as it gave Maybe it's the time that you closed both your eyes And you pouted your lips as you waited for mine In the soft red glow of the soft And so we reach our final portage, Latchford Locks. This is where this episode ends. Back on my home turf, me and my mate Danny Fox used to come here and mither the lock keeper, asking him when big boats were coming through. It's the reason why I'm a canal weirdo. And I'm fascinated by big ships. I'm sort of a bit scared of them, but very drawn to them at the same time. Latchford Locks was officially opened in 1894. That was when Queen Victoria opened the whole of the Manchester Ship Canal. The whole of the Manchester Ship Canal is 36 miles long. It stretches from Eastham on the Wirral to the port of Manchester, which is in Salford. It cost £15 million which if we adjust for inflation, it's about £1.6 billion. Pounds. And we just gave it to Peel Holdings. It was a Daniel Adamson that was the chairman of the board of the Manchester Ship Canal Company. He's the fellow that got it through Parliament and raised all the money. And for that, he got a steamship named after him. It's moored up in Frodsham. We've bimbled to it. The chief engineer was Edward Leader Williams, the same fellow that built the Cantilever Bridge, which is the same as the Warburton Bridge. He would have built all the swing bridges, including the Barton Swing Aqueduct, the world's first and only swing aqueduct. And he would have built all of the locks from Eastham all the way to the port of Manchester in Salford. On top of all that, Edward Leader Williams also made all the locks on the Weaver Navigation and he also designed the Anderton Boat Lift. Clever chap. When it was all finished, it made the port of Manchester the third busiest port in the UK. Not bad, considering it's 36 miles inland. It could accommodate a ship that was 161 metres long, 19 metres wide, and 7 metres deep. That means that the Manchester Ship Canal is at least 8.5 metres deep, so don't fall in. I've been wanting to do one of those cruises, you know, from the Albert Dock all the way into Salford. But it's a bit dear for a bimbler's wage. 48 quid. Did they do influencer rates? 